book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. <clears throat> and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there was, came a loud sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under, under heaven. And with, with this sound, uh, when, and when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, some saying one to another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of in our own language, which, which we were born? Parth Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, in Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and Egypt, and parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We, were, we hear them speaking in our own tongues in the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, whatever could this mean? And others, <coughs> mocking, said, they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But, <clears throat> but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my manservants and on my maidservants I will pour out my spirit in those days. <clears throat> and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs <clears throat> in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. And before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This ends the lesson. Please rise. The reading of the Holy Gospel in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at the 26th verse. Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you all things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 
All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And I would ask our council president uh, to please come forward at this time. I neglected to make a very important announcement. Uh, and uh, can you fire this guy up? Which one is it? Blue. Okay. But if you're colorblind, it <laughs> doesn't help. <laughs> so I'll, I'll kind of make this short, but this is kind of the, one of the um, better parts of my job, right? <laughs> you know, I had to tell you guys we were going into COVID protocols before. Now I'm going to tell you we're coming out of COVID protocols. <laughs> So, sticking with CDC guidelines and the guidelines of the state, for already anybody who's vaccinated should feel free, as they talked about, to come without their mask on. But we also want to make sure that folks understand, if you want to continue wearing your mask, even if you've been vaccinated, or continue to wear your mask until you're vaccinated, we invite you to do that. We encourage you to do that. You shouldn't feel, you know, out of place doing that. We don't want anybody to, to feel out of place doing that. Another thing is we've taken the ropes down so that social distancing you can fill in. I know I upset Lonnie when I told her this is the last Sunday she has to print out all these uh, these pamphlets we've been using because we're going to go back to the books. So, yeah. But the real part that's kind of exciting is, where'd she go? There she is. Marion, what did we talk about at our April council meeting? What did I warn you? I told her, I said, start thinking about a social event to get everybody in the congregation back together again because it's been too long. So mark your calendars. Father's Day, we're going to have a, a barbecue, or the All-American Barbecue. Uh, we'll, we'll be, Mary will be putting more stuff out about that. But, also the blood drive that day, too. And blood drive that day, right. So, so we're, we're easing our way back out of these COVID protocols. So... You know, I don't know about the rest of you, but I've been waiting for a long time to get together to eat some of you guys' food for you to eat some of mine. Yeah, put it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Corey, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll be, uh, there'll be more stuff coming out. I'm, I'll put a letter out, kind of even give more detail. But I, I asked Dave, I said, hey, I don't want people guessing on what's going on. You're welcome not to wear the mask, the social distancing, we'll be back to the books. So I will continue to make them. And, by the way, I didn't tell you ahead of time, but next Sunday, let's have coffee hour. How about that? <laughs> maybe, we can, maybe we can make some uh, Krispy Kremes happen. <laughs> 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 celebration, right? Woo! <laughs> 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 say thank you to all of you for hanging with us when we've been through the uh, tougher parts of the uh, you know, COVID protocols. I know it's been rough on a lot of people, our family included, so so it's kind of like, the, what is it, I think it's the 20th of June, right? Correct. 20th of June is going to be our welcome back party, welcome back from COVID, where we'll get to mingle and break bread and visit with each other, find out how we've been for all this time. Thanks Dave for letting me. Thank you. We'll take that news all day long. Yeah, buddy. Praise um, God. Let's see. I need a stand. I need a stand. Is there a stand I can grab? So I think it's really important also <laughs> that we make a promise to each other that if at any time you have any uh, flu-like symptoms, including a a fever. Um, don't feel like a hero or a martyr. You're welcome to just take the Sunday off. And we're going to continue to worship online. Amen? Amen? We're not, you know, there's a lot of things that we're, 
we've learned through this process and we're going to continue to do. And uh, one of those is Facebook Live and YouTube. In fact, uh, for the future, we're hoping to add um, two, uh, you know, one to two more cameras to uh, everything that's going on. <laughs> he's a fan, and he's up there. That's why we call him the ceiling fan. But I'm bummed, right? That is a dad joke. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's go to the Lord on, on this Praise God, Pentecost Sunday, and let's see what God has for us. So we say again, as we have said before, come Holy Spirit. And uh, that spirit that first breathed upon the waters of creation, come now in this time and breathe upon us. We are open to moves the Holy Spirit. We are open to all that you have for us. And we pray, Lord, that you would use the Holy Spirit to shine your light into our hearts and to illumine us and convict us where we need convicting, convert us where we need converting. Let the Holy Spirit's light and power so radically change and transform us. It's only by the Spirit's power that these things can occur. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It was somewhere between the late 50s and the early 60s. A pastor went to his study. He was pastoring a little church, and I believe it was an Assemblies of God church, in Barnesboro, Pennsylvania. And as he sat there on a Monday morning, the latest edition of Life magazine sat there in front of him. And there on the front cover was the news of New York City's gangs and the troubles and the violence that were, was going on and occurring. And as he looked at the picture and he read the story, it became very clear that America's youth were in crisis. Not having home leadership, fathers in the homes, Seeking those who could lead and guide and have important places in their community. <laughs> they had turned to the streets. They had turned to violence. They had clustered up in gangs. And gangs were killing each other. It was an epidemic of epidemic proportions. Pastor looked at the pictures. And there was something that happened in that moment that as he began to look at the pictures and read the story, that his heart was so wrenched that it caused that pastor from Barnesboro, Pennsylvania, to drive probably, I would say, about 300 miles east to New York City. And he would make several trips back and forth because the Holy Spirit of God had so moved upon his heart that there was nothing else that he could do. And as he got there, he found a way of being available to the court system. And he would go in while these gang members were, were uh, being brought forth in the court system. And he began praying in the court system. And one day he happened to summon the, 
the courage, and it was truly by the Holy Spirit that this pastor would come before the judge and say, Your Honor, yes, this young man has committed crime, but Your Honor, would you give him over into my custody? That for a period of time, I can share the gospel with him. And I can be there for him. And listen to him. And his needs. That pastor's name was David Wilkerson. That young man that first came to his attention was a man by the name of Nicky Cruz. Pastor David Wilkerson found that as he had opportunity to encounter these different youth, whether it was drug violence, gun violence, or it was gang violence, it was addiction on various levels, he found that as folks came to know the saving story of Jesus Christ. But not just that, but received the infilling power of the Holy Spirit that they would come clean. They were able to walk a free life, a clean life. They would give their lives to Christ. They would receive the filling of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's gifts. But he didn't just leave them there. He found that they needed to be shepherded and guided and discipled in this new life that God had for them. To the point that when they were able, that he could release them. You may not know David Wilkerson. Like, raise your hand if you've heard of David Wilkerson. One. But have you ever heard of Teen Challenge? Please raise your hand if you've heard of Teen Challenge. Praise God. You know what? Brother David would be absolutely ecstatic. Because for Brother David, it was never about him. It was about the life-changing, transforming power of Jesus Christ and the filling of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that David counted on and knew and saw had the most transforming power in another person's life. And once encountering that, it could affect not only that person, but generations to come. David's ministry, Teen Challenge, actually, he'd probably prefer me to say Jesus' ministry, Teen Challenge is now not only Teen Challenge, it's also Adult Challenge. There are branches all over the place. There are, in, in, in uh, I can't think of a city that does not have a Teen Challenge induction center where parents will bring their children who are heavily addicted and then frequently they will be so desperate and crying out can you please do something for my son? Can you do something for my daughter? Let me tell you what, there's something powerful about a parent's desperation. If you've ever walked aside a parent who has an addicted son or daughter and to hear about the financial troubles that this, this uh, habit has created, Problems in the family. Problems at work. How they have lost everything because of an addiction. But see, David realized that the only transformative power was giving one's life to Christ and being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God. You see, Pentecost isn't 
content to see, simply be in here on these here pages. Pentecost is that <laughs> which pours out upon you and upon me and leads us to faith. The Holy Spirit fills us with power. And this morning I want to have a chance to talk with you a little bit about that kind of power. <coughs> By the time Teen Challenge had spread from New York and folks like Nikki Cruz were able to go and, and spearhead various chapters of Teen Challenge's movement. In the mid to late 60s and early 70s, there was a, another pastor that encountered the ministry of David Wilkerson and worked side by side with David. His name was Reverend Eric Peterson. <laughs> He's my daddy. And I was raised, our family was raised in a place of seeing the addicted. We bring them into our homes. I saw firsthand folks who were addicted, they'd sleep in our home. We'd come home, there'd be people sleeping on our floor. We had a 21 foot Al Joe trailer. They'd be sleeping in there. Because to our family, <coughs> what is it worth to see a human being set free? To be able to have a new life. I mean, just the very fact. We're not playing games here. We're talking about life and death. How many times I personally had a chance. To hear these kids. By then, the hippie generation was raging. You remember hippies? Oh, we had them all over the place. You think ripped out jeans are new? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that they, was a, that they meant to have them. It'd be young ladies. I could still remember one. <clears throat> He'd been staying with us. Back in those days, they had telephones you'd hold up to your ear. <laughs> But if, if you remember, they actually had a curly gold cord. <laughs> You'd stand there. Remember who remembers those things? And I remember one in particular. Sobbing. She hadn't talked to her mom and her dad in months. Since she'd left for something bigger and greater. Hey, Ashbury, other cities in California, and gotten hooked up in, with various groups, <coughs> some of them with links to the Manson family. And this gal holding that, holding that receiver and talking on the phone, weeping calling up and saying, Mom, Dad, I want to come home. I'm in a good place. Where were these kids calling? They were calling places like Nebraska and Iowa and so many other places that they come from. But you know what? It's not about where you come from. It's about where are you? Going. Come on, church. And see what God was able to do. He was able to take that and use that. There was a number of times that my path crossed with David Wilkerson, the latest, but probably, well, it was before he went on home to glory. It, it was uh, Arvin and I were were just married, so it was probably about 25 years ago. 
and I bumped, I talked with him, and uh, I introduced myself, and I reminded him about my dad, because he, the two of them had worked together on various things. He'd help, come and helped us start churches. David said, last time I saw you, you were about that high. I used to pray for you. I used to pray for you. He said, I'd lay my hands on you because I believed that God had something further for you. Praise God, it's the Holy Spirit that causes us to lay hands on others and believe and release the destiny and the purposes that God had in store for them. You know what? Over the period of time, I've had bishops, I've had other folks come into my life and say, you'll never be a pastor in the church of Jesus Christ. And guess what? Somebody else had already been there before and negated the nonsense. Guess what? Guess where I am? Up here wearing a dress. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this dunamis? since you asked. Turn with me to Acts 1.8. Or I can just tell you what it says. Jesus said to them, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That was the promise that he made to his disciples. It's that Holy Spirit power that manages the changes in people's lives. It's that Holy Spirit power that works transformation. It's that Holy Spirit power that we call upon when the circumstance is so far beyond us, we don't know it's our last cry. And so we cry out, give me the power. And it's that power and, and uh it's used 120 times in the New Testament. This word in particular, dunamis, D-U-N-A-M-I-S. So How many of you have heard that word before, dunamis? Raise your hand. Okay. Dunamis power loosely translates to strength, power, or ability. It's the root word for English words like dynamite, dynamo, dynamic. You get it? But it's more properly understood that it is the power that's associated with the miraculous. It's the miraculous power that causes transformation in a person's life. It's the miraculous power that causes miracles to happen. And so, Jesus, in Matthew 28, he says, you know, in the Great Commission, he says, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, and he gives the Great Commission, right? That's a different kind of power. It's an authority kind of power. But this is the power, the raw power that comes from the throne of God by way of the Holy Spirit that works the miracles and makes miracles happen. How did Jesus do the miracles of his day? It was the miraculous that caused it. And I have to tell you that when people come to church, they're not looking for how shiny our theology is. As magnificent as our worship team is, teams, are. I have to pour all that because we have several, right? They're not just coming to hear an amazing sound. They're coming to encounter an amazing power that works transformation. That is, that powers enough that breaks cycles and generations of hurts, habits, and hang-ups. 
This is miraculous power that causes those things to happen. For too long, the church has been so happy and content with their theological hobby horses. Do you remember those we used to put in like <laughs> a quarter or something if we were, if we were behaving ourselves? At least I did. It was right in front of Woolworths. Yeah. I used to love that. <laughs> Mom, can't run. I'd hit up my grandparents. They were suckers. They'd follow up for me. <laughs> they love me so much. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> of course, back then, I think it was like 10 cents for a good ride. I don't even know that they're around anymore. They have these little power horses in front. You rode, you rode who rode one of those? I tell you what, that, that was a lot of fun. You get on those and you're just rocking back and forth. But you know what? For too long, the church has been rocking back and forth in their own <coughs> theological might and been so proud of how shiny their theological rocking horse is. And you know what? The Spirit of the living God is just waiting. And he's like, okay, you keep doing that. But you know what? I got this here. Fancy pony for you. In fact, this is a stallion. It's called the gospel. And it isn't an old, broken down jackass. Of, I'm sorry. I'm sure I just offended somebody. That's going to go fighting and pulling and tugging because the stallion of the gospel is, the, is, is the, the power of God and his salvation. It's that which the church is, the Holy Spirit is just waiting saying, well, oh, come on now, put right in your little hoppy horses and, and you know, your, your little rides on your, you know, your birthday party rides because we got places to go. We got things to do. God has big stuff in store for us together. See, that's, that's the power. It's the miraculous that makes the stuff happen. And that's what folks are coming for. Man, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's nice to hear a good message. Appreciate it. Hi, woo, woo. Let's get us a nice, good-looking, skinny jean-wearing pastor. <laughs> Let's get one that looks a lot better than this guy. I mean, really, seriously. I was homely when I was a kid. Mom used to tie a pork chop around my neck just to get the dog to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not coming to hear words of eloquence. Does this sound familiar? Like Paul would say, you're not coming to hear words of eloquence. And look, well, my goodness, let me bestow upon you some fine Lutheran theology. Let me preach to you from a good law and gospel dialect. How'd I do? Did I do a good job? <laughs> oh, please, pastor, say, I want somebody to love me. I want somebody to appreciate me. When the people who come through those doors, they're not after all that nonsense. They're after a living, breathing encounter with the Spirit of God because they need that. When they show up and they see the miraculous, someone gets healed or someone gets transformed. Let me tell you what, I'll come to that church all day long and it won't be for an hour, folks. I don't know about you. But I'll come all day long to worship and to see lives transformed. You're still thinking about that thing I said earlier, right? <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Today we're going to have confirmation. And what we're going to do in that confirmation is to recognize the fine work that it's been done of teaching, instructing, 
those who are being confirmed today. Yes. But we're also going to be praying that that same Holy Spirit power would descend upon those that are confirmed and so fill them and transform them. In the area of the miraculous so that they can do the stuff Jesus has called us to do. That's that power. Now, I, and we're going to be praying, that the, asking the Holy Spirit to come upon these ones, that Jesus would fill them with the Holy Spirit and to give them the gifts needed to face this world. This isn't a graduation ceremony. And I know that those, I got my eyes on you. <laughs> Understand, this is not a graduation ceremony, right? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> Megan's back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the beginning. Right? But you know what? We need to be talking about this power. We need to be experiencing the miraculous. We need to have a regular time. And not be accidental about it. We need to be intentional about a regular time when folks have an opportunity to show up with their questions about Holy Spirit. And they encounter Holy Spirit's life-changing work and what God has for them. Because if you haven't experienced that full filling of God's Holy Spirit, maybe it's because for one reason or another, maybe you were raised in such a way, or you know that, oh, well, you know, that Holy Spirit stuff, that's for the age of the apostles. Or maybe you received enough of the Holy Spirit in Bible school to inoculate you. <laughs> from the filling of the Holy Spirit. Take it in today, Corey. But you know what? I want to be walking fully in all that the Holy Spirit has. How about you? Amen. Are you going to be one of those churches? Yes. Well, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it's going to look like. I mean, I always heard about, oh, watch out for the ones that are swinging off the chandelier. I have yet to see anyone swing off the chandeliers, and I've been in Pentecostal churches. Oh, well, you know those holy ghosters, but next thing you know, they're pulling out a snake, you know? You ever hear about those? Yes. I have yet to experience that. What's the other one I love? Oh, you know those folks that roll down the aisles? I've encountered a lot of churches that are holy ghost churches, I have yet to see anybody rolling down the aisles. And you can pretty well trust that if something breaks out in a Lutheran church, take it to the bank. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I believe that we will come to know him more and we're going to discover even more what it means to be sons and daughters, just like that song. How's that go? I am no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And that's what all it is. The joy of being here. Today, if anyone needs the miraculous in your life, let's start asking Holy Spirit. I fully believe that's the one thing the Holy Spirit is saying, God is saying, ask for the miraculous. We need to be asking for the miraculous more. If that's you today, before the end of this service, please make your way up here. Let's ask together for the miraculous. We've already seen the miraculous. we got Holy Spirit showing up during the miraculous. 
all over the place, including council meeting on Thursday night. Praise God. I want to be there. Amen. Alrighty. So, we have some important business to attend to. <laughs> You need a microphone, right?